Hello and thank you for joining me again. Um, this is actually the second time I've done this video now because I've managed to do the whole of the video with my microphone turned off. So, not very clever, but there you go. Um, that doesn't help the fact that I've got a cold coming on and I've got a very sore throat and the last thing I want to be doing is to doing a lot of talking. However, because I'm keen to get this video up today and to show you some of the things I've been doing, I thought I'd just go ahead and do it anyway. Um, I've always been a big follower and fan of various uh, channels on YouTube. A couple in particular are US Near Doc and there's Gorilla Comms as well. Those are the two main ones that I follow. Um, extremely informative, very well thought out and well planned videos and step by step instructions to do various things uh, to do with radios and communications. One thing that um, I've always been doing is to look at ways to have communications readily available uh, at very, very short notice. Uh, that's communications that I could just set up and talk to, whether it's close family or friends or, or anyone else in the, the, the local area. Um, I've been a, an amateur radio um, operator for about four years now, I think about four or five years. Um, started off with M6PCG as a foundation uh, license holder and then uh, last summer uh, I took my intermediate exam uh, and now have the course signed 2 e kba uh, Amateur radio has always been fascinating for me. Um, I do quite a, quite a bit of HF work, uh, mainly VHF, UHF when I'm portable um, out in the car or mobile in the car. Um, but, you know, being able to just set up wire antennas and, uh, and, and getting out great distances around the world is, is great fun. Um, but anyway, getting back onto the point, um, communications, whether it's CB, whether it's uh, ordinary VHF two-way radios, or whether it's amateur radio, um, it's, it's something that interests me. So those are the two channels that I follow. Um, Gorilla Comms is great because they show, it shows how to set up radios, um, good tactical systems as well, um, and a lot of work to do with repeaters, which is something that interests me. You'll probably know if you see my other channels, or my other videos rather, um, I have actually attempted to make um, a repeater. Um, it didn't work very well and you can uh, go through my past videos to have a look at that and you'll see why. Obviously now I've got more of an understanding why it didn't work and fully understand and appreciate that it would never work the way I wanted it to do so. However, um, with what I'm going to show you now, you'll also see that I can incorporate a crossband repeater with what's inside this box. So let's open it up and I'll show you what I've done. This is an old Pelican case that I had. Um, I've had this many years, in fact. Uh, it started off just being full of foam. Uh, I have had a few cutouts just to hold a few radios, uh, handheld radios, but there was no point and it was a big bulky case uh, which didn't really serve any purpose because the radios, when I'm not using, stay in drawers or inside the house or in the car. So it wasn't really needed. Um, there's one channel that I looked at a few years ago. Let me look at my screen. It's a channel by KH70. Um, and there's a guy there who's made an emergency amateur radio communications kit. Uh, and this is very, very similar. Not because I designed it to be so. Um, more of a case of... I had the same components and the same sort of box and I wanted to have the same, um, be able to do the same things, same functions and it just happens that this is the format that I chose. So I'm going to give you a bit of a look at this now. I'm going to bring the camera in in a second to give you a better view. However, just as a, a, a quick overview, if I just tilt it forward, I've got here a Yaesu uh, quad band uh, FT8900R um, amateur radio, um, obviously it's quad band, it's um, got an adjustable bracket so I can raise it up like so. The aerial plugs into the back with the power supply just for ease and then when you want to connect an antenna to it you connect it to this uh, PLT59 female socket. There's the microphone which fits into the clip and you've got a battery meter there, a main fuse and the main power switch. So we turn the main power switch on, battery's reading out a nice healthy 12 volts and then we can turn the radio on and there we go, a radio in a box. Now some people would basically just call this a portable power supply 
which effectively that's all it is isn't it because there's no built-in antenna you still need to have an antenna connected there you have still got to have your radio mounted on this box and in fact any radio will do uh, you can even use your FT857 if you wanted to um, you know it's 12 volt batteries built in underneath so yeah it is effectively a portable battery pack uh, but it does help keep all your equipment safe and strong by having it in a case um, there's a few other features to this I'm going to bring you the camera in now to give you a better view so taking a look at this box then what have we got well like I've already explained we start off with a voltmeter there there's a built-in battery I think it's only a 2 amp hour 12 volt lead acid seal battery um, it's not fantastic and to be honest it's not really all that good uh, if you're running this on low power then obviously the battery's going to last longer but if you're trying to run 30, 50, 75 watts on this, the battery's really not going to last you at all. Always have your equipment protected with the fuse, very, very important, you need to have a fuse, okay? Main isolating power switch there, again, very important. Um, it means you don't accidentally leave radios or anything else turned on, which uh, is feasible, which I'll show you shortly. Okay, and like I've explained, that's where you can plug in your antenna. Now, a PL259 plug, that will uh, allow you to connect any antenna you want, whether it's a little portable mag mount aerial, or whether you've got a portable sort of home base uh, diamond uh, dual band antenna, uh, which I do have, that's again an option. Just to give it um, a bit more use, well, let me switch this bit first actually, um, this radio, goes up and down it needs to be this is probably a bit of a design flaw if I'm going to be perfectly honest the uh, the lid that I made is a little bit too high now if the radios push down the box closes properly um, to use it though it's better if you can just raise it up and tighten these screws not a great problem I mean if you're mounting or you're setting this up on the desk or workstation uh, to use then you know there's no problem with just undoing these two screws and raising the radio up is there but um, it was a bit of a design flaw I do admit so just to hold everything into place I've put in a microphone holder clip um, that just goes into place uh, it helps stop that waving around when you're transporting the kit next to the antenna um, a 12 volt outlet cigar lighter socket um, depending on whereabouts you are, they'll be called different things, but you know, you know what it is. You have them in the car, it gives you 12 volts output. Now, there's also these connectors, the buddy poles. Um, like you've seen on my other videos, um, I use these for all of my radios. So any radio that I have uh, has an adapter whereby you can connect one of those to it. Also, um, charging. Uh, there needs to be a way to charge this quite easily. Um, and with the buddy pole system I've got um, a proper lead acid battery charger that I can use or solar so either type of charger again because I have these as standard for all my electronics electrical and radio equipment will all connect into each other nicely so that's another option so of course you can charge the battery and that's also an output as well so if you want to be able to run something that needs a uh, buddy pole there's one there it's on a bit of wire, it does actually pull out for about a foot, but I've just pushed it in there just to keep it neater. And that's basically the top. Nothing more complicated than that. Very, very simple. It's very simple to build and very simple to, um, to, to operate. Um, but I wanted also to be able to carry uh, amateur radio band plans, um, paperwork, such as what I've got here. Uh, with some frequencies that I use. The RSGB band plan is very useful. It's, it's important to make sure you don't go off track when you're, you're operating your radios. So it's nice to have something. And I did think at one point about maybe putting some like a folder into the lid where I could just insert the paperwork inside. But I didn't want anything on show. Um, I wanted to keep it all nice and neat and tidied away. So what I decided to do is to utilize the space underneath all this lid. So let me show you what I've done. So looking at the radio a little bit more closely then, like you can see, everything's sat as it should be inside this case. If you just lift up this radio very carefully, you'll see the whole plate comes out. 
that can effectively just move forward like so leaving quite a bit of space left in here now all I've done is to build two little shells out of uh, angled steel or it's actually aluminium and mounted those to the side of the case of which this uh, lid just fits on top of. I've got my sealed lead acid battery there which again like I've said everything I use is uh, power pole connectors and I've got a strip of cigar lighted or 12 volt outlets for anything that I want to charge up or, or utilize. I also keep in here a radio that's my Bofung uh, UV5R I keep in a charger with 12 volt outlet charger plug rather and I keep in a very small portable quarter wave magnetic mount antenna this is um, this is quite a good aerial it, it, it does it does its job it's not fantastic for range obviously because of the size of it it's uh, it's only quarter wave VHF but it's um, it's effective and it, and it does serve its purpose so that's something that I can just keep in here out of the way and if I need it it's always in there so it is fully portable in the sense that everything that you're going to need is available inside this case this has got a foam bottom here so it just helps dampen any noise and any equipment like the radio just helps keep it keep it a bit safe now this is the lid if I turn it around you'll see how simple it was to make I've literally got the antenna lead going from there that's the female side of the PL259 for the antenna to plug into and then this is where the cable comes around straight up to the, uh, the angle bend here. It's not a good idea to have too many of these connectors. They do reckon you lose approximately one decibel um, you know, gain in, uh, in power signal if you, you have too many of them. But for every connector, one, one, uh, one decibel, I think it is, you lose. Um, but I mean, for what, for what it is and the power that I'm using, it's not really noticeable. That's a 12 volt outlet simple switch back of the voltmeter and a fuse and it, it is as simple as that um, if I wanted to I can just quite easily just unplug it all and then this here is the whole of the radio that can then be plugged into anything I want uh, another battery or straight into the car into the boot of my car I've got more uh, outlets so it's very easy to strip down and just to show you what's left, the battery on a spare outlet. Um, and you know, it is useful having this space to keep paperwork, spare torches, spare radios, charges and leads and such like. If I wanted to, I could in fact put a bigger battery in here. That would be quite beneficial though, because that's, I think, like I say, is like a two amp power battery. It doesn't give you that much power to use. On low power, if you keep it down to five watts, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot better, or 10 watts, it, it's okay, but uh, any more than that, you just wouldn't want to do it. So a practical use then for this radio. Um, I'm going to try and post with this video another video that I did during the summer when I went camping with this, uh, where you'll see it in operation and you'll see how well it works. Um, I'm going to have to try and find that video, so you'll have to bear with me for that one. But a, a practical um, you know, um, purpose for this You've got a handheld radio and you've got good clear communications between radio and radio. You want a way of charging this, you won't always have um, a 12 volt outlet where you are or, um, or mains adapter. But with this one, that will just plug into there and then that will also charge this radio. So effectively You've got um, a nice little base station here, um, radio and spare radio and docking station to charge. Um, and don't forget there's more of these 12 volt outlets underneath here, so you can charge more of these radios. Now obviously the more that you charge, the less power you're going to have left for your radio. Um, but that's something you need to, to balance and, and consider and weigh up as to what you want to do and what your needs are. But this certainly 
is a very effective way. And having used this and, and given it a proper field test, uh, I, I do know that it works very well and I'm really pleased with it. The only issue, the battery. But saying that, it's quite a big case for what it is. When in reality, if you're going camping in the, and you're fairly careful with your equipment, you don't need a big box to look after this radio. You could have this radio um, just wrapped up in, uh, in uh, um, an old towel and keep it securely saved in your the boot of your car or whatever. Plug it into a 12 volt supply and plug an aerial into the back. You, you don't need all of this, do you? Um, and it's not the easiest things to carry around unless you've got the space in your truck or in the space in your car. So it's probably a bit cumbersome. That's probably my own criticism. Um, if you need something that's going to give you the protection, then yeah, it's fantastic. But like I say, you know, natural disasters are things that don't really happen over here, um, which wouldn't make me need to use this radio. Um, so that's just one of those things. But I have had great fun building this. Um, now, the other thing is charging it. Now, like I said, I tend to use this outlet here, uh, Buddy Pole. This is now where solar comes into its own. This is one of the solar panels that I use uh, for portable use. Um, not the most portable thing. Um, it's a 24 watt, 12 volt solar panel. Uh, monocrystalline, I think is the type of this. Um, I bought it fairly cheaply off eBay. You can get them off eBay fairly cheaply now uh, compared to how they were a few years ago. They've really come down in price. It's, uh, it's a great way of charging your radio. If your radio is going to be on in standby and it's not constant communications, it's not constant transmitting, this will quite quickly put in quite a bit of power into your battery that you've lost. If you're doing a lot of constant transmitting, you're going to need something a bit more substantial than this. I think it gives you about an, uh, about an, in, uh, about an inch, about uh, an amp, an amp and a half um, of, full, of full sun glare on this one. So on the back, you see, again, you, you don't escape the buddy poles, do you? All buddy pole connectors. Now, this is uh, a straight DC output from your solar panel that it comes with supplied here. If you used to connect that to a battery, you don't get voltage going back into the solar panel. It wouldn't drain your battery down uh, when it's not sunlight. Um, but what you could do is to fry your battery because there's no regulator on here to stop this panel from charging up your battery. So if you're using your radio, not a problem because you're never going to fully charge your, radio, your battery up. Um, you'll be using a lot more current than it's going in. But if you're going to be leaving it on standby and it's sunny and you're not using the radio much, you do run the risk of damaging your cells and you don't want to do that. So that's one option don't use that myself. This is a solar regulator um, and this again I bought off eBay for about £7. Um, it's very simple, you put a 12 volt in and you got your 12 volt out, again buddy pole plugs. Practical operation of that, let's put it there for a second. Two ways of doing this, First of all, I'll show you this. Again, it's a 12 volt outlet. That will then plug into here via buddy pole and you've got a portable 12 volt outlet there. And with that, you can plug in something like this radio. That can plug into there. Now, because obviously there's a proper charger regulator inside, the, um, in, inside this um, radio holder, this, this docking station, you're not going to overcharge the radio. So what a perfect way to charge using solar. And this will work just as quickly as plugging it into the mains. That will do a really good charge and uh, not drain the battery from inside here. If you want to charge this one up, we can unplug that out of the way. You can leave it in if you want to. Ah, okay. We'll do it this way. I have another lead, but it's not not near me at the moment. So using this lead, 12 volt, 12 volt, just no circuitry, just a lead and obviously a fuse, you can plug that into there. 
This then I can plug into the 12 volt outlet of that radio and I can then connect that to this solar can charger, solar regulator charger on here and then sun will hit this through the regulator and now charge the battery inside here. Um, I do have another lead that goes from here to the buddy pole which means you've still got this 12 volt cigar lighter socket uh, available here but um, I've probably left that in the car or one of my radio kits. So there's different ways of charging this. You've got to make sure you do have a regulator. You do not want to destroy um, your battery cells. Very important. So I always have a regulator and I always have them fused, very well fused. So it's as simple as that. That's how it works. Um, I have had a field day um, in the summer and I've used this and I've had the charges working and it's worked really well. Um, a great video to go and have a look at again is Gorilla Comms. Now this guy over in the States, he's done fantastic videos and uh, he's, he's, he's always, I mean obviously his knowledge is, is way, way, way above my, my skill base anyway. Um, but with what he's done with portable radios, repeaters and solar as well, it's absolutely incredible. You do need to go and view out his channel. It's really, really informative. This is similar to what he has done. But um, like I say, he'll go into the science a lot more and give you proper demonstrations and work out. And he'll show you how you can work out the size of your battery, the size of your solar panel you need and the current drain of a radio. All those sorts of things. So you really do need to go and check that channel out. Um, US Near Doc, this guy also, he's, um, he's built something similar to this on, in fact, his last video. Um, if I can just find it. I did mention, I think, at the beginning of the video. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a tactical case. It's not a hard case, but again, it's got all the same sort of components inside. Well worth a look at. Um, and then I think the best thing I can do is to then show you another video, or after this video, um, do a video on this Yesu, because I want to go through the crossband repeater. Um, that's built. It's a feature built into this radio. I'll be showing you that as well. Um, but that's again going to be on my next video. So that's pretty much it, really. If you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to email me or put comments in down below. Um, hopefully, over the next few days, like I say, there'll be another video showing this case in more detail and showing a few more. Uh, features of it. I'm now going to go and look for the other video that I've done uh, when I was out camping um, during the summer where I actually use this case and radio equipment uh, to give you um, a bit of a, a bit of a radio clip demonstration. Thing. So we'll see how we go. So thanks for watching and hopefully you'll catch me soon on my next video.